This video is part of the Commercial Building Electrical Design Series. Uh, we're starting our look at uh, special system designs. So we're going to do Introduction to Communication Systems. Um, so like I said, I haven't covered those. This is what we're going to look at next. <laughs> and uh, these are related to the electrical building systems because they will be designed by the electrical engineer uh, and then part of the electrical package. And so the communication systems is kind of a broad area. These types of systems do differ from lighting and power in that they don't just deliver something. You know, power is delivering power, of course, to different locations and lighting, lighting different areas. But these types of systems uh, can also receive input. So they'll take this input, use it to make decisions or communicate some information. So there are several types of these systems take a look at separately. Um, not all of these communication systems are present in every building. So that's another difference here because um, most every uh, building that you're going to be dealing with will have power and power distribution and will have lighting, but not all of them will have each of these communication systems. So some of the more common types of systems that you'll find, at least in commercial buildings, are things like fire alarm, uh, security system, data system, telecom systems, intercom systems. You might see some energy management systems. Uh, you can have a sound system. You can have a sound masking system. So for those of you who don't know what sound masking is, that's where you strategically interject uh, noise. Uh, some people say white noise, but if you talk to the experts, they say it's really pink noise. There's supposed to be a difference in that, but it, it allows you to not be able to overhear other people's conversations. Uh, and, you know, kind of kind of muddles things up uh, on purpose. Uh, CATV systems, clock systems, uh, nurse call, code blue, um, or code blue is in a hospital uh, if they have an emergency. Uh, already said security surveillance, access control, uh, blue light. So blue light's different from code blue. Blue light we see a lot of times on college campuses. You know, they'll have those security pedestals set up at strategic locations where if someone feels unsafe, they can go and pick up the phone and automatically dials the campus security or the police department uh, and rescue assistance. <clears throat> so of these systems, uh, there are a few that may be required by code, depending on the circumstances of use of the building. However, most of these systems are considered to be elective or optional uh, by the client, so that's why you won't always see all these systems. The systems above that may be required, uh, depending on the circumstances, uh, would be first would be fire alarm. So there's many times, uh, you know, depending on the size of the building and the use, especially if there's going to be public access, uh, you're going to be required to put in some type of fire alarm system. Uh, the other one is for rescue assistance. So if you have a multi-story building <coughs> that, uh, you know, utilizes an elevator, uh, and it's usually for, I think, buildings that are four stories or larger <coughs> or, <coughs> or taller, uh, but we usually dedicate areas uh, in the stairwell system so someone in a wheelchair you know you're not supposed to use the elevators during a fire so you know if they can't go down the stairs by themselves uh, a lot of times we'll designate areas of rescue assistance we'll put signage there you may have seen it in some hotels and then uh, in that stairwell we'll put you know some means of communication it's usually down to a central location at the front desk or at the front door where somebody can call down and say, hey, we need help, I'm in a wheelchair, that type of thing. And the other one is nurse call. Uh, many states require this in healthcare facilities. You know, so if someone's in duress, distress or duress in their room, they can call a nurse. Um, all these other systems, though, uh, should never be required by code. I um, can't think of an instance where you're going to have a code official say you have to have a sound system or you have to have an intercom system. These are all usually uh, elective systems by the owner. So the three required systems are governed by the following codes. So you know, for these types of systems, you will need to have some familiarity with uh, NFPA 72, which is referred to as the fire alarm code. So remember, NFPA uh, 
creates and maintains a lot of the documents where the National Electrical Code is actually NFPA 70. So NFPA 72 is the fire alarm code. Uh, you also might utilize the uh, Life Safety Code, which is NFPA 101. It does have some language in there about strobe location and stuff like that. Uh, rescue Assistance, that's also an NFPA 101, the Life Safety Code. And then Nurse Call, uh, that's going to be go that's going to be talked about in NFPA 99, which is the Healthcare Code. So it also needs to be understood what is designed for each type of system, who is responsible for what. So it's a little different than the other systems uh, for power and lighting. So for most of these systems, the electrical design will only include pathways for these systems, which means that the designer is going to uh, have instructions in his design documents to the contractor of where to run conduit and where to set boxes. Uh, that's usually about as far as it goes. Because uh, from there, usually a third-party uh, entity will come to complete the design as far as actually specifying what equipment comes in and what cables need to be pulled in those conduits. So this means for these types of systems, the electrical contractor will install the pathways of the system, but then another technician will install the rest of the system. Now, sometimes this technician will work as a sub under the electrical contractor, which that's usually the case with like fire alarms. Um, but for other systems like telecom and data security and stuff like that, that's usually installed after the electrical contractor is gone, so uh, or by someone else not under his control. <clears throat> so they'll usually be hired out directly by the owner.